All right, this is a, just kind of an introduction to using the robot arm with the Mindstorms EV3 robot. Um, you can find the instructions on how to build this directly within the software, or you can also um, do a Google search and uh, find the instructions. It's pretty complicated to build. There are a lot of uh, little tiny mistakes that you can potentially make that make a big difference in the way that the robot actually functions. But I'll let you figure that out on your own if you haven't already. Um, I'm going to show you how to how to program this to operate, but first I want to show you the three motors that are involved here. And um, this is the medium motor right here, and I have this pr uh, plugged into port A. So I'm going to call this motor A, and you can see what this does is it controls the clamps. And um, the way that we're looking at this right now, you can see that the clamps are closed. And if you look at this uh, gray wheel right here, if I want, if I want this to open, I can't, <clears throat> I can't rotate that wheel clockwise um, because mechanically it's not going to go any further in that direction. So in order to open it, I have to go counterclockwise. But as we will see in the programming, if I go counterclockwise, those clamps are going to open up. But then if I continue rotating counterclockwise after they open up, if I just keep on going, um, you'll see mechanically that those clamps are also going to close. Um, so in, in the wheel going in one direction counterclockwise, they will open and then they will close. And once it closes again, that motor cannot rotate in that same direction any further you would now have to go clockwise in order to open them. So when we get to the programming, what I'll show you is that when you open them, don't open them like all the way. Um, what you wanna do is just open them part way and then, uh, you know, in this case by going counterclockwise, and then you turn the motor clockwise again to close them. So that is motor A. We'll be referring to this as motor A when we get to the software. Um, this motor right here, this is motor B, and this is controlling the up-down motion. And um, so that's what I'm going to call this when I get to the software. I'll, I'll say motor B up and motor B down. Now you will notice that in the construction of this, there is the, uh, the light sensor or the color sensor used here. And it has this little Lego piece. And you'll see that when the robot arm goes down, when motor B goes down, you'll see that this white piece will not be in front of the sensor. But when it comes back up, eventually this white piece is going to cover the light sensor. Um, it's going to cover the light sensor and it's going to reflect the light back in. And that tells it that you can't go up anymore. Or you can use the sensor as a feedback into the computer so that once it notices that there is that reflected light, you can tell it to stop going up. So you have, um, you know, I'm just calling this kind of like a feedback control to the motor because um, there is a sensor that can tell you when the robot arm has been, has been raised high enough. Now, when you go down, there is no sensor. So when it goes down, you just have to tell it how far you want it to go down. And there are some different ways to do this. I'm just going to do it the simple way when we get to the software. So yes, this is motor B and it's just going to be motor B up and motor B down. The third motor, it's hard to see, um, but when you're constructing it, you'll, you'll figure that out. Motor C is, is down here. And what, what motor C controls is how this thing swivels uh, back and forth. And so uh, when we get to the software, I'm going to say, say motor C clockwise, and that's going to turn it this way. As if you're looking down, you're going to see that the arm will rotate clockwise. And then it will be motor C counterclockwise, which in that case, it's going to swivel the other direction. Okay. And then um, just one more thing to note that when you're using motor C, there's a sensor down here that is used and there's this little white fin. So when this, when this motor swivels clockwise, as you're looking down on it, this white fin is also going to rotate clockwise and eventually it's going to push this push button. And so just the same way that this sensor up here is being used as feedback, this sensor can also be used as a feedback. As it's rotating clockwise, 
as soon as that push button is touched, you can tell that motor to stop. Okay, so again, this is motor C, motor C, and we're just going to call this motor C clockwise and motor C counterclockwise. So when you actually go to program this, there I'm going, to, I'm going to say a few things here. This is this is actually a, a lot more complicated than what it initially looks like. So the first thing that you're going to 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 realize is that you know when you open when you want to um, open that, um, you probably just want to run that motor in in the the appropriate direction, maybe for just um, 85 degrees to open it. In fact, that isn't, that isn't even actually accurate. This really gets complicated because if, think about this practically, if you have an item that you want to grab, you can't even close it all the way. Like if you tell the motor to go a certain number of degrees and it starts to close, once it has an object, that motor is prevented from closing any further. And so that motor is just going to keep on trying to close. It's going to try and try and try to close and, but it won't be able to because that object, whatever you're picking up is going to prevent it from closing. And what happens in the software, if you tell it to rotate a certain number of degrees, it's going to, it's going to stop as far as the mechanical structure allows it to. And the program is going to keep trying to close and it's going to be stuck in the software until it can actually close and you'll find out you'll have to abort your program. So that means you need to put some more intelligence into the way that this opens and closes because if you're running like first problem is if you're running it in one direction to open it and you keep going too far, it's going to actually close. And then the other problem is that if you tell it to close a certain number of degrees and, um, the motor can't do that, the software is going to freeze because the motor is stuck. It can't close, but yet the software is telling it to continue to run that motor until, until it continues the rest of the number of the degrees that it has to close. So that's a little bit complicated and I'm not going to get into that right now. All right, so here's the software and you're gonna notice that I have a project. The name of the project, I called it Robot Arm Demo. And within this program or this project, I have numerous programs here. Like for example, I have motor A C W. That stands for motor A clockwise. Remember, that's the motor that controls the clamp. And then I have motor A counterclockwise over here. Then I have another program that is called motor B up. Remember, motor B is the one that controls whether the arm goes up or down. So I have motor B up, I have motor B down. I have motor C, CW, which is motor C clockwise. This is the one that controls whether the robot arm rotates, uh, like as you're looking down on it, whether it uh, rotates clockwise or counterclockwise, which is motor CCW. Motor CCW is motor counterclockwise. And then I have another program over here that I'll show you a little bit later. But let's start with motor A counterclockwise. I'm choosing this one because remember motor A, those clamps are closed. And we noticed by looking at the mechanical structure that, that that gray wheel needs to go counterclockwise in order for that for the clamp to open. And I set this then to uh, to be motor A and to rotate for a number of degrees. And I just used a power of 10. You're gonna notice with this robot, you don't need to use high power. And uh, like power of 10, 20, 10 or 20 is fine maybe 30, but you don't need super high power. Now I chose a number, this is 180 degrees. That's a half turn. You can see by looking at this, that's a half turn. And I did it this way to demonstrate that as the, as motor A rotates counterclockwise, when it gets to about 90 degrees or halfway, you're going to see that the clamp is about, it's, it's completely open or it's as far open as it's going to get. And then as it continues to rotate, still going counterclockwise, you're going to see that the clamp is now going to start to close. So let's go ahead and run that right now. Okay, so it's going to run. You see that it opened and then it closed and then it stopped. All right, so now I think you can imagine, I'm going to, I'm not going to go back to the, um, the computer screen. I'm just going to go to the motor A counterclockwise, which is exactly the same program. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it at a negative 10 
power, a power of negative 10, and also again for 180 degrees. So this gray wheel, um, you can see now, it needs to go clockwise in order to open that up. Once it gets halfway, the clamp is going to be all the way open and then it's gonna to start to close again. So let me, let me hit the run button here. And there it is closed. Okay, now we are going to go to the program that is motor B down. So this is the program, very simple program, just one block that will allow the robot arm to go down. If you remember when I, the last time you saw the picture of the robot, the arm is up. And so now I want to tell it to go down. And remember that there is no sensor that we have to tell it when it has gone down all of the way. So you kind of have to experiment a little bit with these values. But what I did is I told the, the motor to go on for a certain number of degrees with a power of 20. And I just experimented and came up with this value eventually of 275, which will, if, if the arm is completely in the upright position, that will make the robot arm go down all the way. So let me go ahead and run that and show you what it does. So I'm gonna click on the run button. Okay, so you can see at a power of about 20%, it went uh, almost all the way down to the floor. So I could actually, I could do more like 275, um, right now it's 275 degrees, I could potentially increase that just a little bit. All right, so that was the program for motor B down. I'm gonna switch to motor B up. Now that the arm is down, let's pull the motor back up. And remember that um, in this case, we have a sensor. We have the, the light sensor or the color sensor that we can use to tell us. We don't have to tell it to rotate a certain number of degrees this time. We can actually just, in this case, I tell the motor to turn on with a power of negative 20. And, um, and then what I do is I used a weight function. Okay, that weight function is, is down here in this palette. And um, I told it to wait, and I'm comparing the reflected light intensity. And, and if the light intensity is greater than a value of 25, then it continues on to the next function. So this function is just going to wait until that, until as the robot arm comes up, remember that white piece of Lego will block the color sensor and it'll reflect the light back in, and this function just waits until that reflected light intensity exceeds a certain value. That and that, that tells the computer that, that that Lego piece has now come up and it's reflecting the light back into the sensor. Once it does that, it continues on to the next function over here, which I just tell the motor to stop. So let's go ahead and run this program. Um, yeah. Okay, before I run it this time, I just want to show you again, the robot arm is down. And um, this is the little white piece that we're talking about. As the, as the robot arm comes up, this piece gets closer and closer until eventually it's reflecting light back into this sensor. And uh, then that tells the program to continue to the next function and stop the motor. So here I'm going to click on the run button. Okay. So you see that, that that white Lego piece is now right in front of the light sensor or just enough to where it reflects the light back into the light sensor and it now tells that motor to stop. Um, before I show you the program for motor C, remember that motor C is this one down here and it controls the arm um, swiveling back and forth. And I've said as you're looking down, um, it, you know, we're going to have a program that tells it to go clockwise and a program that tells it to go counterclockwise. And right now it's, it, it's already gone as far counterclockwise as you can. You might not tell just by watching this video unless you've actually built the robot, but there is a, there is a, a mechanical uh, limitation to this, that this ro robot arm cannot rotate counterclockwise um, infinitely. It can't spin all the way around. In fact, um, once it gets somewhere um, over into this position, 
um, you know, it, it can't go any further. All right. Now, we don't have a sensor that tells us when it gets to that point. So this is a little bit of a trial and error. Um, there are some other neat tricks that we can do in the software, but it's a little bit uh, complicated. It's beyond where my current class is, and so I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, but I will tell you that if you're in the closed position or if it's gone completely uh, clockwise so that this button is pushed, you know, you can only rotate it back out counterclockwise a certain amount. And I even tried a couple of times where I just turned the motor on high speed and I just told it to keep on going and it actually broke the structure. I mean, it didn't break the Lego pieces, but the structure fell apart. So um, again, that's why I say you want to just use the motor slowly and don't try to extend it beyond what the mechanical structure allows it to go. So right now, again, I, I want to close it. I want the motor to go clockwise until this little white fin will now press against this touch sensor. So let's look at the software. All right, so in the software, I want to run this program called Motor C clockwise because I want it to, to turn clockwise. And so what we have here is uh, I turn on motor C and I turn it on at a power of 20% and I'm just telling it to go infinitely. All right, so it turns on the motor and then it goes to the next function. And what this function does is it waits until the push button has been pressed. So it's using the touch sensor. If I click on here, I'm using touch sensor, compare state. and the state that I'm looking for is when that, when that press button has been pressed. All right, so I start the motor. Oh, sorry, I start the motor. Then it waits until the touch sensor is pressed. As soon as that touch sensor is pressed, it goes on to the next function, which now turns off motor C. All right, before I run this program, um, the, the motor C clockwise. Let me also show you the motor C counterclockwise because it's a very simple program. I can show you these two just at once. Remember, there is no sensor uh, telling us when, when the robot arm has moved as far as we want to counterclockwise. So it's kind of up to us. I mentioned already though that there's a limitation in the mechanical structure. If you go too far, it can damage it. So I'm just gonna set this to turn on for a number of degrees, a number of degrees. I'm gonna put it at a power of negative 20 and, and I'm going to tell it to run for 360 degrees. This may or may not be the amount you want it to go. We'll kind of see what this does, um, how far it comes out at 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and run the programs for motor C clockwise and motor C counterclockwise. So what you're going to be looking for is you're going to see this when I run this, it's going to start to rotate. It's going to start to rotate out this way. And as soon as this white fin pushes the, the push button, you're going to see that that motor stops. So let's see if I can get a decent angle while I run the software. Okay. So you'll notice that it stopped once it, it pressed the, the press button. Um, you, it's not pressing it now um, because once the program stopped, what, when this motor was, was all the way turned up and pressing the motor, um, as soon as the program stopped, um, the, the motor was no longer like putting pressure to keep it in that position. So the mechanical structure has a tendency, um, it, it doesn't like to be in that position. So it, it, there, there's a force that's required to keep it up against that, that press button and that only works when the program is running. So as soon as the program stops, you see that that motor relaxed a little bit and it came back out. So um, let me run the program again to close it. I'm not, I'm going to do the motor counterclockwise, motor C counterclockwise. So it's going to open it back up. All right. So, um, I'm running that at 360 degrees and you see that, uh, that it came out to a pretty good position. Now I'm going to run motor C counterclockwise. I'm sorry, motor C clockwise again. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer as it's going so you can see that fin. I know it's a little bit blurry, but you're just going to have to deal with it. Here we go. Here we're running it. 
There, it pressed it, then the program stopped, and then since the motor is no longer forcing it to stay against that, it relaxes and comes back out. Now you can tell motor C when it stops to lock in position, and as long as your program continues to run, it will hold that position. All right, now um, I'm going over to this last program that I wrote, and what I called this was motor C combined. So what I've done, um, in my class, I haven't got even, we haven't even started talking about loops and conditions yet, but, so I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but I took a while loop from down here and I put it up in my program. And what I'm doing is um, I am turning the motor clockwise, uh, motor C, motor C clockwise, so that the robot arm will, will, if you're looking down on it, it's going to rotate clockwise until the push button has been pushed. Then the motor is going to stop and I'm going to lock it in position. And then I'm going to wait for one second. So you'll see for one second that motor, that motor is pressed up against that fin. The fin is pressed up against the push button so that the motor doesn't rotate anymore. But whereas before, when we saw the motor relax and, it, and, the, and uh, that fin pressed out against from the button, you're going to see that that button um, stays in position locked with the push button closed. And it's going to wait there for one second. And then I'm going to turn the motor in the opposite direction. So a power of negative 20 instead of a power of 20. So now this is going to um, move the motor counterclockwise. And so um, then I'm just going to, I'm going to let it go for 420 degrees in this case. And we'll see how it runs. Again, this is, this number is a trial and error because we don't have a sensor that tells us when the robot arm has rotated counterclockwise far enough. There's no sensor. We just, um, again, there, there are ways that you can fix this with other things, but I haven't, I haven't talked about those in, in our class. It's a little bit more advanced beyond what most, where most of the students are. So we'll talk about that some other time. So for now, we're just going to use a trial and error value of 420 degrees. Once it reaches that position, it's going to pause for one second, and then this while loop tells it to just go back to the beginning, and now the motor is going to rotate clockwise again, and it's just going to repeat. It's going to go clockwise until it hits that push button, wait for a second, then, then it's going to go counterclockwise, wait for a second, and it's just going to keep repeating. So let's go ahead and run that program, and you'll see how it works. All right, so let's run the program. Okay, so it went clockwise until the button was pressed, came out 420 degrees, then it goes back. And each time there's a one second delay in between each time. So when it comes, when it comes counterclockwise, remember I just told it to go 420 degrees and stop for one second. And then when it goes clockwise, it waits until that button is pressed. And I want to zoom in a little bit closer on that. You'll see that once it's there, it doesn't relax. It stays pushed in there because I told the motor to lock and the program is still running. So the motor is still applying pressure to that push button once it gets there for that one second delay. Uh -huh. 